Howdy y'all, DJTJ here at RollToWound.com. On today's Soul Black Gravelords War Scroll Review, I'll be looking at corpse carts. So, let's get ready to roll. Alright, on this War Scroll Review, we're going to, we're going to take a look at the corpse cart. Um, corpse cart's been around since fantasy battles used to have a lot uh, used to be a little bit different in the older books um, and now it has sort of a different role so let's go ahead and check out the corpse cart with unholy lodestone it's got six wounds a four inch move a six up save and ten bravery as far as the weapon profiles you get to pick between the corpse go go the corpse goad or the corpse lash. Um, the goad is a two inch range, two attack, four is fours, one damage. The lash is one one inch range, three attacks, four fours, one damage. Um, it also has the rusty blades from the zombies pulling it. It's two d six attacks, five fives, one damage. Um, something interesting here is that the zombie attacks are a mount. So those the things that do not affect mounts won't affect the rusty blades. But pretty much won't matter because that's artifacts. This isn't a hero, so can't really put that on anyway. But just keep that in mind for any kind of spells or weird interactions you might have. Um, abilities. Unholy Lodestone. Add one to the casting rolls for friendly soul black gravelord wizards. Holy within 12 of any friendly model with this ability. It's a solid. Everybody loves a plus one to cast. Um, it also has Locus of Undeath. Add one of the save rolls for attacks that target friendly Deadwalker zombie units wholly within 12 inches of any friendly model with this ability. Keywords, Death, Soul Black Gravelords, Deadwalker Corpse Cart, Corpse Cart with Unholy Lodestone. So let's transition to the slides. Now, I, for the first couple of slides, I'm really just going to look at Corpse Carts in general um, because they're a bill their their war scroll other than the the two different abilities that you get one from unholy and the one for the bellfire um, i'm just sort of going to look at their base um, war scroll first and then we'll sort of go into more details over what's the difference between the two so starting out they cost 80 points um and they have the dead walkers keyword it's pretty much the only things of note going on there yeah i ran the damage on them and you start <laughs> Oh my goodness, they do 14 to 15 wounds. Yeah, you're not getting that. That's their total max output. Um, 14 with the goad and um, 15 with the lash. In personal opinion, if you're going to arm it, uh, the lash is just better. Um, I don't think the extra two inches of reach is really helpful. I mean, if you're fighting over um, you know, your screen, it could be. But all in all, I don't know. I guess I would take the extra attack. Um, the average wound output is going to be about two. So that's actually a little bit less than two. Um, yeah, you're you're not doing much damage with this. Uh, it doesn't want to be in combat anyway, so try not to even worry about those stats and just keep it out of combat. So in general, good. Each variation has some uses. So you have two different corpse characters. They do two different things. Um, the bad, and low save, low wound, bad attacks. It is slow. It's not going to keep up with much anything other than zombies or maybe your death rattle that's just sort of not even, you know, anything that runs, you have to run this to keep pace with them, which is fine because it doesn't have a shooting attack and you don't plan on charging it really. Um, the zombies will tend to outpace this as well because they're going to have six inch pile in, so they have sort of a more of a nate move. And, and I see you spending your CP to run the zombies more than you would the corpse guard. So I just think that it's it gets it's going to get outpaced um, trying to travel around the map. So real quick, let's look at just Bloodlines buff that sort of arc off the Dead Walker's keyword. Uh, the bait will give it a first one uh, plus one save in the first round. Uh, strength of the pack is the wolf is plus one to wound. Which you know is helpful, and spore tracker is pretty much a, a, an interesting interaction out of the Vicros Dynasty. It will work on that too. There, and to be honest, there might be something else in the book somewhere that I'm missing that arcs just off Dead Walkers. But in general, um, it's not summonable, so you're not getting a ton of interaction 
from it because a lot key off dead walker zombies or something like that are a summonable dead walker unit and this is all right so let's go into detail on the lodestone version um it's a plus one to cast is great in a magic heavy list so if you plan on running a lot of sort of backline casters maybe a, a necromancer and a vampire lord or or um anything in the vicros if you're running sort of that caster heavy build that plus one to cast is definitely welcome uh, plus one to save looks good on paper, and I will admit, before third edition came out, this was my this was the the corpse card that I liked the best. I thought that plus one to save was just going to be so helpful. Um, but there's there's a couple of downsides to it. In the current edition, it feels like everybody has plus one rend, and it feels like that extra to your save can be found in a lot of other ways. And to be honest, a six up save on zombies anyway, isn't that good? So the more I keep looking at it, the more I just don't like it. I don't, I don't really, it's not bad. Obviously I would always take a plus one to save on my zombies, but if I'm looking at the two corpse cards and it, their abilities, I think that the, uh, a six up save on them zombies isn't doing much. Um, the 12 inch bubble isn't bad, but it isn't great. And the other thing is that it's add one to dead walker zombies so it's very specific if it would have been dead walkers in general it might have been a little bit more interesting because it would give itself this buff um but since it's dead walker zombies it only works on those units i really wish it had like the hero keyword or the ability to cast a spell or dispel something i mean it's supposed to have a necromancer driving it anyway so i wish we just had a little bit um a little bit something extra, an extra keyword in there to really help it out a little bit. Um, in my opinion, this is the inferior version of the two in the current state of the game. I give it a C C ranking. Um, I think they're just points are spent better in other places. Now, if you're running a you know a zombie heavy army with casting heavy and you want that plus one to cast, sure, it's not too big on points, but all in all, if I had the choice between the two. I would probably take the other one. And, and let's just put it this way. If this was the only choice you had, and this is what it did, I don't think you'd see a lot of people bringing it. Um, just for the points wise, I, I, I don't know if it's doing enough other than if you're just building around that plus one to cast. Cause I really don't think the add one save is doing much. All right. Moving on to the corpse cart with Bellfire Brazer. Um, I'm not going to go over the regular stats. They are the same. The only difference between these two are the abilities. Uh, the brazier itself is subtract one from the casting rolls of enemy wizard with an 18 of a friendly model with this ability. Solid. And uh, the fumes subtract one from wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by enemy units while they are within nine inches of any friendly models with this ability. Even going back to last edition and second edition, I always thought that a minus one to hit and a minus one to wound are two of the most powerful things that the debuffs in the in, in the game. In the current edition, I don't think the minus one to hit's that big of a deal because there's a lot of ways to get around it. But the minus one to wound, they're still it's still very powerful. So there's a couple of good things about this. It's a subtract one from wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by enemy units while they are within nine inches of this model. It's not one enemy, it's all. So you don't need to even have, you know, nine inches is in a huge bubble. It would be really cool if this was 12, but nine inches isn't bad. So you can sort of tuck this behind your big blocks and it's going to be able to affect one or two units at a negative one to wound, which a lot of most units i'll say in the in the game don't have a way to get extra rerolls or you know an innate reroll and an eight an eight plus to that so it really hampers them all right thoughts um negative one to cast and 18 is a solid ability if you can get the uh, corpse cart to the middle of the board sort of spread that aura out unless you're castled up and you're playing an aggressive caster army somebody that has some stuff that's going to run up on you then you know obviously they're going to be in that bubble Negative one to wound is very, very good in third edition. Range is a bit short, but a great way to keep your uh, zombies alive or any other thing you don't want dead. Uh, it's not an auto include, even in a zombie heavy list, but negative one to wound is very good. Once again, we know that, right? You could even look to use one to support grave guard. That's what I kind of like. I kind of like this sitting behind some grave guard throwing out that negative uh, to wound bubble. The biggest issue is that it's slow and needs to be protective. It will melt if anything looks at it. Um, it's going to have trouble just keeping up in general, even if you run it a lot. Um, 
in the right build, running two is not out of the question. And what do I mean by that? Well, these abilities don't stack um, because if you read it, it's like any friendly model with this ability. So the negative one to cast and the subtract one from ruins will not overlap and give a big negative two bubble. However, if you're running a symmetrical list, maybe two big blocks of grave guard and you sort of spread them out on the board and having one of these follow each around, that way you sort of, the bubbles are even bigger. And I like that idea because it's really not that expensive to do for what that they actually do to keep your grave guard or if you're running big blocks of zombies alive. Um, I don't I think it's needless to say that a minus one to wound in most scenarios is going to be better on a block of zombies than it is a plus one save for them. I think that if we just look at raw numbers, that negative one to wound in the long run will be 10 times more efficient in a game. Uh, unit rating, I'm going to give it a B plus. Uh, the negative to wound modifier is short range, but can severely hamper some armies. You start thinking about that. There's a lot of heavy hitting armies out there um, that, that wound on fours and fives. And think about that. Now, all of a sudden, they're wounding on fives and sixes. So that just that throws their percentages out the door for keeping your stuff alive. I would, if the stats, if the base stats for movement or save or wounds were a little bit better, I would love to put this up into the A category just for that, but it might even be argued that it's a B minus. It's pretty much getting that B plus just based off of its abilities of a negative one to cast and mostly the negative one to wound. But it is a very fragile platform. Um, a good enemy, especially a good shooting enemy, will try to target it early to get rid of it because it has no good save and it doesn't have a wound shrug. So keep that in mind when you're adding it into your list. I don't expect them to last very long because good opponents will try to take them out so there are my thoughts on the corpse cards i really wish they had a hero keyword or maybe could cast some sort of spell or um or maybe just have a disp, uh, uh, dispel ability i really think they're missing out but they are a cheap unit um the Bellfire, in my opinion, is is the superior, and it's not even close to the two. But I could see that the other one, uh, you know, your plus one to cast, that could also be useful if you build a list around it, or you just felt just you needed that extra casting. So if you agree or disagree with me, put it in the comments. Let me know. Also, how do you plan to use your corpse cards? What do you run them with? How do you run them? Put that in the comments. Let everyone know. And once again, thanks for watching and y'all be good.